Hebrews 4.12, the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the dividing of sunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is quick to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's a mouthful right there. The Word of God is living. It is not dead words written by dead people millennia ago. It is alive. The Word of God is alive and active. That doesn't mean past. Not only is it active in your past, but it's active in your present. It is active in your future. The Word of God is living. It is alive with you. Living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. That means it can cut in any direction. Dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. That's the triune, the, the trinity of man. The soul, the spirit, and the body. Everything that you are. It will slice your spirit. It will slice your soul. It will slice you in the physical. Living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing as far as the dividing of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. And quick, quick to discern the thoughts and intentions of the heart. To discern means to see things clearly. To see yourself clearly. God save us from having to look at ourself as God sees us. Your thoughts and intentions to the very heart. That means your core. The Bible, which is the truth of God, pierces down to your very core. Mind, body, and soul. The triune nature of man. It will slice and dice you down to your very thoughts. It'll show you how your very thoughts register with God. There's a great verse in 2 Corinthians 10, 5 that says, Bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You think about that. Bring into captivity every thought that God will show you if you will get into the Word yeah, that thought, that's fine, but that thought you need to put out of your mind. That thought you don't need to register. That thought you don't need to dwell on. You slice that out of your life. You cut that out of your life. And then it goes from your thoughts, it goes to your intentions. What do you intend by that? What do you intend by this thought over here? What is going on with you over here? And it goes from your intentions to your motivations. What's your motivation for going to church? What's your motivation for reading the Bible? What's your motivation for helping these people? Are you doing that out of pureness of heart? Or is there something sinister going on with what you are doing? And it causes you to look at your very motivations. And then, man, it starts getting into your attitudes. That attitude stinks. You need to cut that attitude out of your life. And this attitude, yeah, that's something you need to work on a little bit. And this attitude, yeah, yeah yes, you can pull that in and work that in all of the motivation. And then it starts working on your attitudes and it cuts away what needs to be cut away and it helps what needs to be there. And then it gets into your actions, what you are actually doing. You don't need to be doing this. You don't need to be going there. That's what you need to be doing and this is why you need to be doing it. And when you look at all this, people look at themselves. They see themselves as God sees them. They see that they are bloodied up from a thousand cuts because they haven't been trying to be what God wants them to be. And they throw that book down never to read it again. Because it's living and active. And it'll slice you to pieces. And if you're not tough enough to deal with the truth, you will not stay in that book very long. 